great. Steve Weiss, what after this week are you now watching more than anything else? Is it all still about rates? It's all still about rates, absolutely. And it's going to be the rate of change of rates. So I'm watching inflation. I'm watching, you know, the general economic news, more important than they've ever been. But I believe the market can ultimately withstand a 3%. As long as we don't get there next week, get to 2.5% next week, I'm looking for 2% over the next month or two, I think we'll be fine. Uh, the market, you know, news flow is commoditized versus how it used to be. So you get it, you get it quickly, you digest it, maybe the market reacts, and then they move on. That's why I've had a series of V-shaped recovery. To me, the most important thing is going to be what the economy does. I think that's well on its way. Of course, you've also got to watch the tax plan and what that does, but that's going to be an odd lot. That's going to be a knee jerk. I think we've already seen it. That was the action early in the week. So the only thing that really worries me is, as I said, rates and hot inflation. See. Because the market doesn't believe Powell has the same credibility that he had. The Fed put, Fed put is gone. You need to see a major move in rates to have a twist, which means for them to buy long dated, sell short dated treasuries. So that's what you got to watch. All right, Anastasia, I mean, it, it seems the biggest question in the market right now is whether we're going to have a big correction in the market or not. So when you look at where we are, what do you see? Yeah, I think, Scott, that has been the question sort of since the beginning of the year. We're going to have a big correction. And the answer we got, we had a mini correction. But what I'm encouraged by is that when we look at the positioning of some of the hedge funds and some of the levered funds and CTAs, they have actually been reduced. So I think we had a clearing out of the squaring of positions in February and early March. So that's a constructive uh, setup there. What I'm watching, like Steve, as if we go into Q2, is this momentum handoff between we believe growth is going to happen in Q2. We believe reopening is going to happen in Q2. But do we believe inflation is actually going to come? And could that potentially surprise the upside? So I think that's going to be a key conversation for the markets in Q2. We're likely going to see some core PC prints that are going to surprise to the upside, perhaps. And then on top of that, all this fiscal stimulus, the infrastructure package, talk is going to heat up in Q2. So all of a sudden, I think what the momentum conversation is going to become is not so much about the reopening trade, but the reflation trade and how to position for that. OK, so Kerry, on the on the issue itself of where the market is and what is going to lie ahead, whether we're going to be facing a larger correction, Tom Lee argues no. OK, and the reason he says that is because we've already had rolling corrections. And if you've paid attention to those, you've noticed that technology and growth corrected by 15 percent in February and March so far. Energy stocks are down 13 percent in the past two weeks. The Russell 2000 is down 10 percent in the past two weeks after big runs all the way along. So you're not going to get a larger one because in a sense you've already had corrections in a lot of the frothiest areas of the market. Is that how you see it? Well, he's making a good point about corrections that have been happening really since last September. And we have definitely felt ourselves here the technology correction. What I think Tom is saying is that GDP growth is going to be strong this year. If we're talking about 6% GDP growth, what do markets do when we have that kind of an economy? And in almost all cases, 2000 being the one exception, the S&P 500 has gone up that year particularly following a recession. So if we have strong GDP growth, we had a recession last year, chances are the market is going to go up. If it goes up, then there will be broad ranges of participants. It's very hard for the market to go up without technology, which is, you know, 40 percent of the market is technology, communication services, plus Amazon. It's hard for that whole market to go up without having them participate. And if you look at this little chart that I use sometimes, Vinny put together, that shows the percent of S&P names that are ahead of the index year to date and then since the middle of February. The middle of February, which is when recently tech names started to fall, 71 percent of the entire S&P has been beating the market since mid-February. That's amazing. That is a very large number. It means that the big names, the big capitalization names, have not participated, the big tech names, communications. And it's been a very broad market. And today, if you look at who's ahead, 
materials, number one group, then technology, and then energy. Very strange bedfellows. Mm. And it may be that we're seeing a broader range of what investors are willing right now to look at and say, we think there is potential. Tech names that are down, some of the reopening names that have not been very strong, and then we're going to let some others slide for a while or plateau, as Tom said. All right.